Um, and then I would say another, another mishap was that we saw fire start when we were in oh, wow. like almost to the Oregon border. We were right before the Oregon border and there was a little lightning storm. Like, you know, you could see across the way and literally just saw like a lightning bolt start a fire. Wow. I called it in or my friend called it in. That yeah, was crazy. Holy shit. That must've been scary. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, oh, we should probably <laughs> hike faster. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, they, and we saw like yeah the kind of the um helicopter come and you know with the with the water and the fire retardant to try and put it out. So it was a very different experience. Wherever you go in the Catskills, you could look down and imagine glaciers below you. I think the weather challenges on this incident were particularly difficult. Whereas Panther Mountain is totally opposite, it's a mountain on top of a crater. It was really the development of New York State. Catskills were responsible. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Inside the Line, the Catskills. Vicki, we're going to start this. So how are you doing? Doing well. How about you? I'm doing good. Vicky has been a friend of mine um, for a little while, ever since somewhat high school. We're not best friends, but we've known each other for a long time. Um, her brother, Connor, was the best, uh, best friend of mine. I love him. <laughs> um, but Vicky tonight is on the show. Vicky is an Oneana native, an Otigo native, actually, if you're from up here, Otigo, Otago, whatever you want to call it. She's been here for been there for your whole life, basically, right? Until now? Uh, yeah, I mean, I moved away maybe 10 years ago, but grew up from when I was a kid. So yeah, I spent most of my, my life, my young life there. Yeah. Damn straight. Damn straight. So she is, is here. Uh, and we're going to talk about her hike along the Pacific Crest Trail. So uh, she's going to go over some stats, but I think it's over 2000 miles, correct? Yes, it is. 2,650 miles. Good Lord. Awesome. High elevation stuff. So I'm very excited because I stalked her on Facebook so much or on Instagram so much. Um, every day I would come like uh, downstairs and luckily my wife and I worked at the same time. She's like, oh, Vicky posted a new video. I'm like, cool. Or pictures. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'll be getting one of those pictures for the cover photo, by the way. So be happy to share. <laughs> so it's good to have Vicky tonight. I, I usually shoot the shit with, with her. So hopefully she's been doing well. She's been all over the freaking world. It's insane. I'm very jealous, but <laughs> she is awesome. So we're going to have her tonight here and talking about the PCT 2,600 mile journey across the, uh, uh, from Mexico to Canada. Correct. That's correct. Oh, man. So cool. So cool. All right. So I'd like to thank my monthly supporters, Katrina Weinig, Darren White, John Kamiski, Vicky Ferreira, Jim C., and now Michael Bogner. Thank you very much for supporting monthly for the show. I really appreciate it. Vicky, what you drinking tonight? I remember saying you had a happy hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, drinking some Juicy Bits is called. Uh, it's an IPA. Um, let's see, Weldworks Brewing Company based out of Colorado. So it's pretty good if you like hazy IPA. It's my new favorite. Excellent. I'm going to put that in the show notes. <laughs> Christ, I don't know how to spell. Um, that's good enough. Um, <laughs> it, it corrects itself. So um, excellent. I'm just having a rum and well, it's a, a vodka and coke. I'm um, from Union Groove Distillery from Arkville. So oh, nice. Shout out to them. Put that in there too, or I'll forget it. I totally forgot that you are in a different time zone. Yeah, it works out though. How what time is it there? Five, five, 5 p.m. Okay. <laughs> okay. I totally forgot that when I set this up. Oh yeah. I was like, oh, that works. It's the end of my perfect happy hour time. So good. Good. That's why I, I it caught on and she's like, she said it's happy hour, and I'm just like, no, it's seven o'clock. It's past happy hour. And I'm like, <laughs> I totally happy hour here. Yeah, I didn't know you were over in Colorado. So cool. Um, so I mean, I always ask people this, and usually because they they don't hike, I don't get really any good answers. So, but you, you've been on a previous hike or something like that in the past couple of weeks? Uh yeah. Let me 
Try and think. Um, so yeah, currently living in Boulder, Colorado, just moved here a few months ago, exploring the local neighborhood. It's really cool. Um, yeah, we're right. I'm in what's called the front range. So I'm really close to where the Rocky mountains start. Um, and yeah, there's a, a hike nearby called bear peak. And yeah, I think it's like 3000, 2,500, 2,600 feet of gain. Um, Ooh. so yeah, I did that this past weekend. Wow. Excellent. How many miles? It's not too long, like six miles, but, um, but beautiful views. Oh yeah. And, and Alpine zone is everywhere up there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so jealous. Have you been to, uh, I've only heard of this. Is it called garden of the gods up there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you'd probably find it a bit tame for hiking, but it's really lovely. It's like really cool rock formations. Um, yeah, very accessible. A lot of it's like paved. So very accessible for everyone to go to, So it's a really good go-to place for, um, bringing visitors. If you want to visit. Oh, trust <laughs> me. I think I have, I have like, I don't know, three or four friends. I just made some new friends from out in Colorado at, uh, mm-hmm. Shadows Fall show, a metal show over in Massachusetts. They traveled all the way out from there, from from Colorado, just to see that band's reunion. And I was just like, it's really, really, we, we stay in touch now. So definitely nice. got to, I mean, Colorado is definitely on the list of visiting. Mm-hmm. You, you can't, I mean, I've been to the Canadian Rockies, so I, now I got to go to the Rockies in America. Mm-hmm. So excellent, excellent. That's cool. Yeah, I recently have gone on only local heights. It's, it's just been, life has been busy as heck. Mm-hmm. So I've been on local hikes, but I've never known that Oxego County has hikes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, there's always something there. You just have to find it. You know, I was yeah. living in DC before and, and people are like, oh, is there hiking around DC? And there is, you just have to, you know, you just have to find it. Not much elevation gain though. No, I mean, you know, you went to the Shenandoahs. It's not too far from DC, but oh, yeah. yeah. I love that place. It's beautiful. Can I have to talk about those? I'll have to bring my, my wife on and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you you and Jessica went, right? Yeah, yeah. That's when we uh fell in love with through hikers. <laughs> well, that's when she <laughs> fell in love with through hikers. I mean, I knew I knew all about through hiking and stuff, but once she like was just like somebody was just like, oh, you know, talking to her, and all of a sudden she's just like, Well, we got some candy bars and their stuff, really? And then she's just oh, like, yeah. we gotta go to the store and get stuff. Like, you give uh, them food or something to drink, a beer, a Gatorade, they'll love you forever. So it's pretty easy. <laughs> exactly. So I, I mean, that's, we'll, we'll probably get into that a little bit later. Um, but I couldn't even imagine the difference between the Appalachian Trail and the PCT because you can't, there's, there's nobody up in the PCT, like towns or anything. There are some, but yeah, it's not, it's not as accessible as, as the AT. Nice. Crazy. So excellent. So any cat skill news? Uh, I know that everything's thawing here today was 72 degrees here. So it was good. Um, 72 freaking degrees. I loved it. So everything's thawing, but still within the next, I think this is going to be aired. Oh, this is, it's pretty far away from now, actually. Uh, the 25th. So you just pack those two pounds of micro spikes. Just don't be a wuss ultralight she's probably going to talk about ultralight tonight were you an ultralight uh i would say it was in between i was i didn't i didn't go full ultralight okay that's good that's good (laughs) i remember people doing full ultralight where they carry the they're just like i got it down to eight pounds i'm just like how the hell did you get it down yeah (laughs) i kept my stove i couldn't give it up i know right worth it for me (laughs) those are wicked I got to admit, did you have the the jet boil stuff kind of like that? I, I just had a, a pocket rocket. So it's the, like the lighter version. It's just the lighter one that you, and then got like a, I think a toke stove or a toke um, uh, pot. So oh, it's like the lighter, the lighter version, but I, I kept it because I like some having a hot meal in the evening for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can't go, can't go wrong with a hot meal spice up your 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 life and your feelings <laughs> <laughs> all right so vicky i'm going to do some catskill mountain history is that okay yeah go ahead all right so i got this uh this little excerpt from a book by heart of the catskills by bob student i've been digging into his books lately really cool stuff um, it's about deer and how rare they were back in the 1800s. It's really, really cool. So I'm going to jump right into it. 
So in sharp contrast to the sad story of the passenger pigeon stands the case of the white-tailed deer hunted in the Catskills to the point of near disappearance by the 1880s. According to one local historian, swine released to forage in the mountains in the summer for the most part had replaced deer. As Charles F. Carpenter, who inspected the Catskills in 1886 upon request of the newly established State Forest Commission, was to report, deer are rarely seen and much more rarely killed. It is fair to suppose, Carpenter concludes, that there are not a dozen deer in this whole Catskill region. In an effort to remedy this deplorable situation, two years after the creation of the Catskill Forest Preserve, the state legislature in 1887 authorized the State Forest Commission to establish three deer parks in the Catskills. To this end, and after extensive study and debate, a sizable acreage on the south side of Slide Mountain was selected as site for these proposed parks. Inspected personally by Forest Commissioner Townsend Cox in mid-August, the chosen site was situated in remote and wild lands, which the state had begun to acquire 10 years earlier at the headwaters of the west branch of the Nethersink. Cox was himself was familiar with the intended location of the park for the previous year in June of 1886. He had climbed Slide Mountain with other dignitaries and commemorate <laughs> officially in the establishment of Catskill Forest Preserve, arguably the most important legislation affecting the Catskills to be passed by New York State Legislature in the 19th century. Staying overnight in each case study nearby Winnesook Lake, Cox gave his approval of the site and his early experiment in wildlife management in the Southern Catskills. Constructed about one mile south of present day slide trailhead in the town of Downing near Shandake and Downing Line, which is west of slides trailhead, and what is known as the Old Satterley Lot. The park would not, however, become operational until 1889 when 45 deer, which had been herded into the lakes of Adirondacks and trapped by men in boats, were shipped to the Catskills by rail and released into a fenced enclosure of some 200 acres. Named after Henry Satterley for his family, who had owned this land, the area in which the park was located had not been settled and only sparsely until that of 1871 and not until 1875, by which a primitive road had been driven up the Big Indian Valley and over to the notch of the West Branch, built by local men who were paid in 50-pound bags of wheat flour, was accessed this area by wagons made practical. It was here in this wilderness, it must be remembered that prior to the creation of the park, passenger pigeons in such prodigious numbers had previously nested. Now visited by John Burroughs and the other curious sightseers who drove up the park in buggies, to see the deer, the park became a popular destination and a source of amusement for tourists and locals alike in the last decade of the 19th century. So that was weird stuff that there were no deer in the late 1800s in the Catskills. Very rare. And uh, what's cool is we're going to talk I, I, after reading this and speaking about this. I put in a question for you, Vicki, later on. I want to see what kind of animals you saw on the trail. Oh, yes. I hope hopefully they're they're really cool ones. Yeah. There's some cool animals that I saw. <laughs> Excellent. So hopefully you enjoyed that Catskill Mountain history. Once again, I am not, I read like a, a weirdo. It feels like I'm back in fifth grade or something like that. So <laughs> once again, Connor and all them would probably be embarrassed, but they, not true. they know me. They know me. Oh, I love Connor. I miss <laughs> that guy. <laughs> we um, all do. He's busy now, you know, he has a kid <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Cutest kid ever. Not at all biased. The cutest kid ever. Yeah, he posted a picture the other day. Oh my god, him and James and and Connor. Oh my god, their babies are just insanely cute. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So, um, so welcome guest of the night, Vicky Ryan, and her experience of hiking along the Pacific Crest Trail. Two thousand six hundred miles. And I stalked her crazy on Instagram. Once again, every day would be a new video or new pictures. And I was jealous as heck. I was, I guarantee a lot of people are with the, the stuff you posted. It was great. So Vicki, uh, give a little background about yourself. If you can, uh, you don't have to go in great detail, but you can, because I know you've been everywhere. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, I grew up in Otigo, New York, the small town, tiny town of Otigo, New York in the countryside so not even in the town um and yeah did a bunch of 
wandering in the woods behind my house. I felt like I, I didn't really know what organized hiking was for quite a while, but I feel like just being exposed to it as a kid um, helped me appreciate it and love doing it. Um, yeah, and then moved out of there for college, eventually moved to DC um, and was working there for living there for about 10 years. And now just recently moved to Boulder, Colorado. And in between there, yeah, spent spent some time abroad, lived in France for a couple of years and in West Africa (laughs) for a year and a half and spent some time, yeah, for work traveling in other parts of Africa. And I always tried to get out and explore whatever local hikes there are, um, which is very different depending on where you are from the desert to the uh, to, you know, the rainforest. Um, yeah. And so that's a bit about me. I've always kind of dreamed about doing a long trail. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I'll explain more about why, what pushed me to do it, but, um, yeah, a bit about me. Botigo, mm-hmm. uh, population of God, I don't know. Is, like, it, is it over less. a thousand? It's less, it's like 4,000, I think. Okay. Okay. As of five years ago. So it's probably less than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, so we were in a small town. We were a very tight group. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody we had, a, I think I had a graduating class of like 82 people. So yeah. And it was like 75. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope some of the people are here probably from the city and they're like, Oh my God, that's, that's crazy. We were a tight knit group. Well, tight knit community. Good play. It was yeah. a great place to grow up. I got to agree going like we all swam at the same time. We all played sports together. We it was very rarely. We didn't like some other person in our, mm-hmm. in our area. Mm-hmm. So, so what uh, my big question ever since you did this seriously, what, what made you just like drop everything and go hike a 2,600 pound trail? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's something that I wanted to do for a while. I, you know, like I said, I've always been into the outdoors and just love hiking and, um, always been an active person, a runner and soccer and things like that. Um, and I, I don't know, I think, um, I was working in a corporate job (laughs) after grad school and was like, you know, had worked so hard, like through grad school and to get this job. And I was like, what am I doing? You know, once you are, are actually doing it, um, and yeah, just started kind of daydreaming about, about, you know, what could I do and read more about the PCT. You know, I grew up in the East coast and I lived in New York and, you know, spent time in New Hampshire in the whites and lived in DC. So spent quite a bit of time in the 18, like the Shenandoahs. Um, so I, the PCT kind of drew, I was drawn to the PCT because it would be more of an adventure, you know, on the other side of the country. Um, yeah. And I, I thought about doing it in two, 20, 2020, but then COVID. <laughs> so yeah. I got a permit and I was, you know, like, all right, maybe I'll do this. Um, but honestly, you know, it was okay to have that extra year. I just, you know, prepared more and read more and, you know, saved more money. <laughs> and then, yeah, I think I was just not fully happy in my job and that made it at first I was going to take a sabbatical, um, an unpaid sabbatical. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to quit. Um, and, and, you know, do the stream and not feel like I'm tied to having to come back to this life that I wasn't fulfilled in. So, yeah. Wicked. That's like everybody who does like a, a long trail, that's like 90% of their answers. <laughs> I just wasn't happy at my corporate job and I quit. Yeah. Yeah. And I just said, <sighs> screw it. I'm out. <laughs> I wish I, I, I want to do that so bad, but you should. <laughs> Life is, is difficult. So I know, I know it is, but but excellent. Wow. That is, uh, that's like, like I said, what I hear, did you have like friends that were, were, were influenced you or is it not really, honestly? Um, I didn't really know anyone who had done the PCT or really the AT, except I, um, 
maybe you know Emily Underwood, <laughs> who's yes. also from Unitigo, who's a super badass lady, and she's done all three trails. So she's done the AT, the PCT, and the CDT. So she's a triple crowner. And no I got shit. back in touch with her um, because she moved to West Virginia. So I was living in DC and she was in West Virginia. And we started like, you know, going, doing some like cross country skiing and hikes and just picked her brain more about it. And she was like, you should totally do it. It's amazing. It's life changing. Um, so it was really helpful to talk to someone else, like another woman who had done it and, you know, who was so passionate about it and really prioritized the outdoors in her life. And and yeah, so I, I guess talking to her was really helpful for me. And another yeah, Nina Keegan. I know it's it's so crazy. I didn't know she she did that. Mm-hmm. My God, it sucks that that some of these people. I know I know like social media is is it like a curse, but it's also a blessing to to see what yeah. other people are doing. And I gotta I gotta find some of my friends that like I never knew she was in your grade, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. she was in my grade. Mm-hmm. Okay, was that was she? sister of kurt yep Mm -hmm. okay i haven't god i haven't seen these people in years it's so (laughs) crazy that's so crazy and then and then also you met who did you meet on the trail again up towards yeah yeah april thorpe (laughs) (laughs) crazy (laughs) who i didn't actually know um i didn't know from from unity go but she knew connor and so we were you know we're kind of shouting it's like oh i'm from new york state oh me too i'm from new york state i'm from upstate new york okay cool me too i'm like oh i'm from oniana she's like well i'm from otigo i'm like oh well, actually i'm also from otigo <laughs> <laughs> and it was so so it was yeah really crazy Small that's world. so crazy <laughs> freaking a so uh do you have like any any stats like off the top of your head or actually real stats yeah like stats like just like about the trail or like yeah yeah yeah. like elevation gain distance uh yeah time basically you know yeah sure um yeah it was so it took or um as you mentioned 2650 miles from mexico to canada passes through three states california oregon then washington um it took me a little over five months to complete so i guess five months in a week <laughs> for wow. specific um has 40 for 490,000 feet of gain i don't know how that um compares to the at i think the at the at is def is probably more we can talk more about that um i think the at sounds very difficult but um yeah um yeah and my wow. Longest day was 72 miles. <laughs> Whoa, in one day? In one day. <laughs> no shit, you were booking. Did a 24, there's something called the 24 hour challenge that people can opt to do. Um, so so I did that in Oregon and ended up doing 72 miles before I was like, all right, I need to go to bed. <laughs> how, wow, how much time did that cut off doing up to 72 miles in one day? That's... But then you have to like rest for two days, you know, because you're so <laughs> exhausted. You just kind of like wait for your friends to catch up and you're just like chilling in town and they're like fine because they've only been doing like 20, 25 mile days. So they're like, oh, hey. <laughs> hey, and, <laughs> and then they're like, let's get going. going. Yeah, and you're like, oh, must be, <laughs> my feet hurt. <laughs> that is so crazy. So God. 2,650 miles, mm-hmm. 4,000 or 400,000, over 400,000 feet of gain. 490,000 feet of gain. Jesus. Wow. That's a lot. What, uh, do you remember what the lowest point was? Did you start at sea level down in New it, Mexico? It, you know, it actually, it's the high desert, so it's not, um, sea level, but the lowest point I think is in, um, what's it called? Uh, this town in Oregon, um, and it gets to something like, yeah, like a hundred or something. Wow. So it does go, yeah, it goes pretty low. And what's the highest point? Um, I think it's like 1300 or 13,000 something. Yeah. That's actually on the trail. And then you can opt to a lot of people opt to go off and do like a side trip up Mount Whitney, which is the highest point in the continental U S at like 14,080 or something like that. Yeah. I think it was like 14,000. 87 or something like yeah. that i've looked right. i've looked into that so many rescues on that <laughs> oh really yeah that i can see that <laughs> dumb people <laughs> wow excellent that is so cool that's a lot of gain holy shit um i'm um, now when you uh when you did that you went you did part of the john Muir trail right yeah part of it i forget i think it's a few hundred miles right 250 oh, nice. i don't know something like that overlaps with the jmt 
um, yeah, one of the most beautiful sections on the trail for sure. That's why so many people do it. Um, the Sierra yeah. Nevadas, right? Yeah, the Sierra Nevada. Oh. Mm-hmm. I've 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 looked into the John Mayer Trail, and I was going to do that one time, and I I told my wife, I'm just like it's it's 200 miles. That's not bad. I'm mm-hmm. like I could I could finish it because I'm I'm not a speed hiker, but I like to hike fast. I could probably hike very fast if it's fast flat ground mm-hmm. and even going up and stuff like that. But just, just for some reason, thinking about it and trying to plan overnights and eating and stuff like that has got to be insane. Yeah. It's, it's very overwhelming in the beginning. Once you get it down, you kind of know what you eat and you figure it out. But in the beginning, I was definitely overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, yeah. Yeah. Scared shitless probably. Right. You're just, yeah. So crazy. you get dropped off at the, at the Mexican border and you're like, all right, bye. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> See you in 2,600 miles. <laughs> yeah. So was there, was there any times you didn't think you, that you wouldn't be able to make it, that you were going to exit out? Honestly, no. <laughs> awesome. I awesome. Just, I really I really loved it. Like there are definitely challenging times or hard days. There were, you know, weather or mentally or whatever, but I never, yeah, I never got to that point. They, everyone always says never quit on a bad day. So it's like, if you have a bad day, you know, generally a good thing is going to follow and you're going to change your mind. So, but yeah, um, it was such a dream of mine that I, I don't think I could have forgave myself if I ever quit. So, but yeah, but I, I didn't really have those negative thoughts. <laughs> how was, uh, how was the weather? Yeah, it was all over the place. <laughs> um, oh, man. yeah. Coming from like the East coast, you know, I, we start in the desert, it's like hot and dry and I'm, pale you know I'm not really (laughs) made for the desert um so that got that took some getting used to um yeah and then there are cold you know cold nights where it's like freezing below freezing at night um there were some you know there's some snow got some snow in Washington some rain um in also in Washington uh but the joke was it doesn't rain on trail which is terrible Mm. that's that's terrible like I was like California is going to die. Like there need, it needs to rain. Um, yeah. Yeah. But gen- and generally we didn't hit, I did not hit at the point that I had started on the trail, which is April 15th. Um, there were really bad fires in California last year, but I was far enough ahead that I, I got some of the smoke from, you know, from the fires, but I didn't have to skip it. Some people had to skip like someone told me they'd skip 600 miles because of fire. Oh, wow. At one point they closed all of California, like all of the state um, trails in California. They ended up opening them back up, but that's how bad it was. But I, I think I lucked out. Um, it was a really low snow year in the Sierra Nevadas, which is also, I mean, good for a through hiker because it's easier, but terrible for the environment, you know, like yeah. the water that Californians depend on that comes from the mountains and there just wasn't a big snowpack this year, but. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. I was going to say you, you go through almost every sort of climate mm-hmm. up there you go through, you know, the desert and then you get up into the mountains of the Sierra Nevadas and then you go back down into Oregon, which is almost like rainforest sort yeah. of like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you travel back up into Seattle where you keep climbing higher and higher yeah, and you got high. all those wow. volcanic, Mm-hmm. rock or volcanic mountains up there so that's pretty wow yeah wicked. really cool um so the what one big question i have i mean i know the east coast is full of water mm-hmm. but it's still scarce over there but how was that? was it tricky over in the sierra and like i would think sierra nevadas would be tricky but Oh, the water in the Sierras was amazing like you know, there are just streams everywhere so that wasn't an issue um you kind of you can even just like a lot of people will walk with just a water bottle and just like fill it up and put a, put a filter on it. And, or you don't, some people wouldn't even filter because you're at such high elevation. There aren't really a lot of animal, like stock animals or anything up there. Um, But the difficult water section was the desert, uh, which is like the beginning, the first 600 miles. And yeah, I think the longest part portion or section stretch without water was like 36 miles, um, which is a lot. So if you, my rule of thumb 
just for my mental calculation was like one, one liter of water for every five miles, just to make sure like, and then you add more if it's hot or if you have to cook or if you're camping overnight um, and you have, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So 30, 36 miles, <laughs> um, you know, is what is that? Two, four, six, um, like seven, seven or eight liters. Each liter is 2.2 pounds. So oh, like, wow. you're also carrying like all this extra weight on your back. Um, so I think that was the most difficult part of the desert was just the extra weight you're carrying the mental, um, you know, game you're playing of like, is there going to be water at this next location? Do I carry more to make sure I have water, but then it's so exhausting to carry that. Um, yeah. So for me, for coming from like the Northeast, that was, that took some getting used to for sure. Yeah. Did you, um, in the, in the desert, of course you probably, did you have to hike any off trail to, to go find some water sources or did you like, did you ever hit a spot where you were like, oh shit, there's no water source here. We got to find something. Um, yeah, there were definitely some times where you had to get off trail, but, uh, you could plan ahead. Like I would plan ahead and say, okay, I have to hike, you know, a mile. You always just try to minimize. (laughs) We joke that it's like through hikers of babies, because we don't want to hike any miles that are not on trail. It's like off trail miles are just the worst. (laughs) So you don't want to do anything that's not contributing to your path forward from, you know, to Canada. Um, so sometimes, yeah, in that case, if it's like a mile or two miles off trail, I would opt to carry more water to avoid having to walk those extra, you know, that's like two extra two miles just to get water. But, uh, there was a really good app (laughs) that people would, which highly recommend for anyone who does the trail that people would comment on. So it shows like where you are, like GPS location, and then the next like water source, the next campsite. Um, and then people could comment on it to say, this water is terrible. Um, you know, skip this water source, like go to the next water source. It's called uh far out. Oh yeah. I got that. Excellent. Yeah. So they don't just do long trails. They do, you know, like the AC, the a- AT, PCT, CDT, they do a ton of other yeah, like, I got that. shorter um, trails as well, which is awesome. Sweet. And that was really helpful for planning. I'll put that in the notes. Excellent. Far out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, so, uh, you know, like, like once again, I, I did some research with the John Mayer trail. I was going to do that like three or four years ago. So the resupply situation on theirs is pretty tricky because you got, I heard of several times you got to go pretty far off trail, like six, seven miles. Yeah. Is that, is that a pain in the ass kind of thing? Like, ah, <laughs> oh, shit, we got to go get our resupply. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Cause you're like, oh, I have to hike these extra miles. But at the same time, so the longest stretch I went between towns was eight days and that was in the Sierras. The Sierras yeah. were the most remote, for sure, the most remote section. And that's just, you plan to bring extra food and you just have to make sure that you meet your daily mileage and do more opposed to less. Um, so you don't end up with like, you know, not enough food. Um, yeah. So I, there was, uh, the longest stretch was eight days and then we <laughs> yeah, had to hike, I think it was seven or eight miles off trail one way. Oh, man. And then you get to like this little remote, you know, campground that's at whatever, like 11,000 feet or something like that. Um, and you have to hitchhike down. So, you know, like this, think of the weather, it's like 75 degrees. It's beautiful. You know, have to hitchhike down and we get to, and you, you just start like descending, descending, descending. We were actually in the back of a truck (laughs) so I could feel like the the weather change, like the, how crazy the temperature was changing. We got to the bottom of, you know, to, to wherever, like the, you know, bottom of the mountains and the, the temperature was 104 degrees. Oh, wow. (laughs) So air conditioning to, to freaking sauna. Right. Right. And then we had to hitchhike another, I don't remember like 20 miles or something to Bishop, California, which was like the nicer town. So yeah, that was, that was probably the most, um, you know, exhaust, exhaustive resupply resupply. Yeah. So there, there were definitely sections that you had to go pretty far off trail, but then there are other times like the desert, the, re- the towns were pretty accessible. Um, but I would say the Sierras and then Washington had um, the longest 
food carries. Yeah, but the beauty of the Sierra Nevada is really oh my takes God. so amazing. It was I loved it actually. You didn't have service the whole time. I honestly, I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> Some yeah. people, yeah, felt like you know a little scared, like they're not you know there's you don't have access to amenities and towns and. I was just like, what? This is so great. <laughs> yeah, you're up pretty high in the Sierra Nevadas too mm-hmm. the whole time. Yeah, I think, right. I, I remember getting to like this lake that was like 10,000 feet or something. And then we kind of stayed at that, you know, you go above below, but you try and kind of like camp at the lower, whatever the lower after a pass, um, mm-hmm. lower elevation because it's warmer and generally better water sources. And yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I definitely, there's a, there's a place I'm going to, Jessica and I are going to go check out in the Sierra Nevada. It's called, uh, is it Bear Paw High Sierra Camp? Ooh, I don't know it. It's, it's, uh, it's like, a, I think it's like 2,500 feet and it's a 13 miles to get to. Mm-hmm. You go from the Sequoias right from the, almost the, okay. the general and you go up and they, it's, it's a little on the expensive size, but it's like an, like an all-inclusive hike up there. They cook stuff for you. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so just, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to convince her to do that. I'm yeah. just like, it's, it starts in the so giant sequoias and then you get up and you, beautiful. you're up in the middle of nowhere. So mm-hmm. I've seen pictures of the Sierra Nevadas and I'm just blown away by its beauty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I honestly, I think it's the most beautiful place I've ever been. So highly recommend anyone to to visit excellent wow um yeah you guys you could definitely got to go to to canada the canadian rockies i saw your pictures of Banff. i really want to go it's so good it's so good i wish they had a long trail up there i'd be there in a second mm-hmm. <laughs> they probably do they, they have the hut to hut trail mm-hmm. um so um did you have any like unexpected mishaps like any something that that kind of was just like oh shit this is it's not fun yeah um I didn't have like bad injuries or anything I had a couple things um but that kind of worked themselves out pretty quickly however um I was in northern California we were at Bernie Bernie Falls State Park which is it's a beautiful state park it's a nice nice waterfall um and we were camping at the campground and, you know, I'm used to like cooking on the ground, <laughs> you know, like sitting in the dirt and like have my stove out and I'm cooking on the ground. And I was at a camp, like at a picnic table and I poured, spilled boiling hot water on all on my thigh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's like really bad. I got a second degree burn. So oh, it was shit. like boils and it's real, real gross. Like, um, yeah, the skin kind of was like kind of, you know, coming off. (laughs) And yeah, and it was like, you know, I could still walk. It wasn't like I had a hurt foot or something, but it was really inconvenient. It took like over a month to heal because, you know, my shorts are rubbing on it. And yeah, so that was (laughs) that was kind of the you know, what I say my is my worst injury that wasn't thankfully wasn't a real injury. Um, and then I would say another, another mishap was that we saw fire start when we were in oh, wow. like almost to the Oregon border, we were right for the Oregon border and there was a little lightning storm. Like, you know, you could see across the way and literally just saw like a lightning bolt start a fire. Wow. I called it in. So or my friend called it in. That yeah, was crazy. Holy shit. That must've been scary. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, Oh, we should probably <laughs> hike faster. <laughs> holy crap yeah they, and we saw like yeah the kind of the um helicopter come and you know with the with the water and the fire retardant and try and put it out so oh, it was shit. a very different experience wow that is insane crazy so how did you uh with the the skin burn from from the hot water how did you like remedy did you have like lotion to put on it every day did yeah, honestly, like at first I was doing band-aids on, on it and it made it worse because it needs to like air out so that it can actually dry and like heal. Um, so I ended up honestly just like tucking in my shorts so that it could air out. And I even went to the pharmacy. He was like, I have the second degree burn. So what should I do? He's like, I guess you could put some ointment on it. Like they were yeah. just kind of like, uh, there's nothing you can really do except to just kind of let it heal. So um, I just, I don't know, just dealt with it for 
I'm not Interesting. Pull one away. <laughs> still have a scar there. It's still there. It's not going away. It's a memory. Mm-hmm. Get to get a tattoo below That's it. True. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, um, uh, I know this. I should have probably asked this before. Did you? How long did you hike solo, and how long did you hike with? with people? Yeah, yeah. Um, good question. <laughs> so. You know, I started the trail solo and everyone's like, oh my gosh, you didn't start with anyone. It's like, no, but it's so easy to meet people. Like everyone, you know, there's some people that start with like their partner or friend, but a lot of people start solo. Um, And, you know, I knew I was going to have to spend the night like camp alone at some point, but I ended up having to camp alone my first night. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) I was like, no, like, you know, it was fine. Um, But I heard like newts, kind of like lizards running around and in the middle Mm -hmm. of the night. Um, I was like, this is not how I wanted to start this, but it was fine. You know, got, got the jitters out of my system. Um, And yeah, I, I met people, I mean, pretty quickly, like within the first few days and s- hiked with two people that I met with, you know, on day five. <laughs> so, um, but there were times I would say probably, I don't know, like I only camped alone, maybe 10, t- 10 times out of you know, 10 nights, um, out of the entire trip. And that was because like, I either got behind, you know, there was a time when my husband came to visit me in Mammoth, California, which is great. But then my friends, my trail family, we call it our trail family had to, they're not going to wait for me, continue walking, which meant I was behind everyone. Um, and yeah, I was alone in, in the Sierras for like five days because, oh, wow. uh, you don't really see me, you know, it's like, the I would say the desert you see people every day you know a lot of people like every day are kind of you know and then people drop out in early on in the trail so it kind of whittles down over time yeah so I would say the majority of the time I camped with someone but I would maybe hike alone like 50 percent of the time like during the day wow it was great and that, do you think that's also because of your, your pace and their pace, you know, like, yeah. of course, everybody tries to keep with each other, but then you also have probably super fast people like you. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Everyone hikes their own pace. It's like the, the saying is hike your own hike, which, yeah. you know, I'm sure you've heard. It's like, do your own thing. Don't base what you're doing on other people, because then you're going to, you need to get the full experience and what you want out of the trail. Um, so if you're trying to keep up with someone or, you know, someone's going slower than you want to go, then you're going to be unhappy and you're not going to get, you know, whatever it is you want out of the trail. So yeah, definitely. Um, there were, you know, times when maybe, you know, a friend of mine hiked really fast, but then he only wanted to do 20 miles that day. And so it's like, all right, I'll just go a little farther the the distances are different than the AT (laughs) so it's like easier to hike bigger miles on the PCT than on the AT because the terrain is 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 easier to be frank like I was pretty you know I was I'm and I was in shape when I started but I was still like okay I don't want to get hurt I want to make sure I'm fine you know I don't want to overdo it and Emily Underwood was like you'll be fine like you hike on the AT all the time like you hike on the East Hope east coast all the time um the trail on the pct is designed for people but also like pack animals so like horses um so i think it can yeah, over mules. like a 10 percent grade i don't know what the grade max grade is on the at but i'm pretty sure it's more than that and it's not rocky like the at you can like look around when you're walking um so anyway i guess i just wanted to call that out if it sounds like a lot you know, like I was doing like a probably average of 25 mile days and that's not, that's not crazy. Um, it's crazy though. <laughs> it's, so. It sounds like it, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard that uh, as well, that, you know, the, the AT is, is very, very challenging just mm-hmm. because the, the train goes back and forth of crap and then the roots of yeah. the trees and rocks, the rocks. And then, like you said, the grade, once you get like a lot of people don't, expect of how crazy the uh the white mountains are oh yeah oh my gosh no switchbacks just walk up it (laughs) yeah and you've been you've been there and we've yeah i mean i've hiked in the catskills over in the east coast they don't believe in switchbacks Mm -hmm. it's 
Let's get straight up to the top of the mountain. And then people on the West Coast are complaining about their switchbacks. I'm like, switchbacks are heavenly. You yes. Like try and go to the White Mountains and like you go straight up from like, you know, sea level to 5,000 feet of elevation without a switchback. Mm-hmm. It's not. Yep. Yeah. That's why I've heard so much of that. That's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of, a couple of my friends have done the AT and they've just said, you know, I had my friend Mo on here that did the the AT, and he said is the crappiest section is Pennsylvania. Yeah, Rock, Rock <laughs> but, Sylvania, they call it that, right? <laughs> yeah, and then like I'm just like the lowest elevation of any of the things has the crappiest terrain. Oh, yeah, like, weird, <laughs> weird stat. Mm-hmm. But, excellent. So, um, did you besides the lightning strike and getting second degree burns, was there anything that was uh, unexpected on the trail that? Or was it, you, you probably researched it so much that it was just like, all right, that's good. Um, yeah. Anything that was unexpected, I guess more of the overall experience on the trail. Like I'm, you know, I was thinking more about the athletic portion of it. You know, I don't want to get hurt. I want to make sure I don't overdo it in the beginning. And, um, you know, but I want to make sure I'm like, pushing miles and things like that. But then I guess what I didn't expect was the focus on like friendships. Um, like the, yeah, the friends that I made on trail that, that you are so you such a like minded view of the world just because you have this big thing in common. Um, so it's like people who are so different and I would probably not be friends with, you know, in just because our paths wouldn't have crossed in, you know, my real yeah. life. And, and it's like, just brings people together in a different way. Um, and then also like the kindness of people on trail, you know, they say the, the, um, saying is the trail provides <laughs> and it's yeah. like, what does that even mean? The trail provides, but there were multiple times where I was like, da- you know, like down in the dumps, like. I was like exhausted, like, you know, just not having a good day. Maybe I was alone. Like I can think of one time in particular I was walking, I was in Oregon. Uh, My friend and I had just done like a 31, 30 mile day the day before to, and we wanted to, we went up and summited South sister, which is like a, you know, an offshoot just like for fun. (laughs) We added Mm -hmm. 12 miles for fun and a bunch of elevation gain. Um, and I had to like make it into, we were going to Ben, I had to make it into Ben to like get my box, um, like my resupply box that I'd sent because the, uh, the, um, post office was, was going to be closed and, um, I was exhausted. I was just like having an emotional, emotionally difficult day <laughs> and a ranger, stopped to check my permit and I'd accidentally sent my permit in like my resupply box oh, to my bend God. and my phone was dead. So I like couldn't pull it up on my phone. And he was like, you know, scolding me. I was just having such a <laughs> off day. It was, it was also like the volcanic rock. So it was really tough to walk on. And I just get to the road and then bend is like an hour. It's like an hour hitch to bend. I was like, great. I'm never going to get like a ride, like a hitch to bend. And then there's my friend, you know, I've had this terrible day. There's my friend who I hadn't seen in like weeks and he's there with his mom and they have like this beautiful trail magic. So like food and snacks and they're like, oh, yeah, we can totally give you a ride to bend. And I was like, I almost cried like of happiness of, yeah, I don't know. So like things like that, that you just don't, ex- don't expect people's kindness and to be there when you most need it. Being humble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like to just, I don't know, take the punches because you're not, you know, everyone's kind of struggling in their own way, just at different times. So how can you help others when they need it? Yeah. Awesome. That's really different. I got to admit. So uh, this is the, the question that I thought today, what animals did you like see in an encounter? I'm I'm so excited about this. I'm curious. Um, yeah, so different animals on the West Coast than than on the East Coast, obviously. Saw a lot of marmots, a lot of marmots oh, in the Sierras nice. and in Washington. So I would say the Sierras in Washington had the most like visible um animals. Saw deer, obviously. Um, oh yeah, the marmots were like not afraid, <laughs> especially in the Sierras. They were like, Are you gonna give me food? I'm like, no, yeah, it's not, you don't do that. Um 
the p- pica i love pica if you don't know what they are they're like they're like a small groundhog right like really shrinking like a squirrel yeah. or a, a chipmunk slash groundhog they're in the rabbit family i call them mouse rabbits <laughs> oh excellent. but they're but they're in the rabbit family and they're just so cute um and they make these like little meep noises and when we were hiking they like collect they live at only high elevations they're like one of the only animals that stay and live at high elevations they don't go back they don't you know go down um for the winter so you see them collecting all of their um you know food which is like grass and stuff and then you see them running across the rocks to like hide them in their um uh, in their little hideaways so they are my favorite animal um saw a bear i only saw a bear once which uh, i was surprised but i saw very close as a black black bear so didn't see uh, didn't want to see a grizzly <laughs> yeah yeah um, of course and saw um mountain goats which was yeah. really cool there was like a, a mo- like a mom and her baby and we were hiking behind them for like 30 minutes we're like mom please move out of our <laughs> way we don't want to scare you but we would like to pass <laughs> um yeah and I didn't see a mountain lion but my friends of mine did who I was hiking very near by um so they were definitely out there they just shit not to be seen crazy mountain lions man I I love it how people that's one of the big topics that I want to get into is later on and with somebody is about mountain lions on the east coast because it's funny that people think they exist but they really don't (laughs) if you saw one mountain lion on 2600 miles maybe you didn't see any of the the other person my friends did and i was very close to them however they don't want to be seen they're not gonna like they're generally not gonna do anything to you you know and and if you avoid night hiking like that's generally when they come out then you're gonna be fine yeah, there's stealth. Yeah. <laughs> wow, sweet. No, like like up towards the north, do they have more? Do they have moose up there that you were hoping to encounter or no? Um, I don't know. So I know I know towards uh like Glacier National Park and stuff like that, yeah. which you're not In Colorado. Not near. They definitely have moose and elk, but I, you know, I don't know. I definitely didn't see any. <laughs> oh, I'm poor. Which, that sucks. You know, I've always wanted to see a moose in New Hampshire, but I haven't. Yet same same here <laughs> not Great. you know too close they can say they can say pretty far away but you know yeah 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 we uh when we went up to the canadian rockies we came probably within 20 feet of grizzly bear whoa that's um, scary that was crazy that was very scary because jessica was in front of me and you know she's looking at the ground because the canadian rockies are full of roots and everything it's really crazy And I saw it and I like grabbed her bag and I was just like, stop. I'm just like, we got to turn around. I'm like, you're supposed to make some noise. But like, I turned around, I kind of pivoted my feet. So it would make something. He was on a slope and he fell and he just went all the way down the mountain. (laughs) But she she panicked and like sprinted up the mountain and people were on their way down. And we told them, we're just like, uh, there's, we think there's a grizzly bear down there. Just going to go down there. The, the wife of the family went in full on panic mode, panic attack. She just started oh. breathing, breathing heavy. She fell down and we were just like, oh my God, she's like hyperventilating. We got to like figure something out. And then we're just like, no, no, he fell down the mountain. We we're trying to talk her down. And the guy's just like, she freaking does this all the time. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, we saw actually a grizzly bear twice up That's there. Fine. One was off the road and there was like freaking 200 cars taking pictures, mm-hmm. idiots taking selfies and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. like, you guys are morons. Yeah. I went by, I took a picture with my, my long lens camera and got a better picture. Than yeah. Guys. Then their but, selfie. Uh, was the black bear close? <laughs> it was pretty close. Yeah. It was like 10 feet away or maybe 15 feet. Like it was oh. very close. I kind of like walked up. It was me and a friend and, you know, it was kind of like, water like you know got scared and but it was just eating and then it kind of did like an arc around us and it kept eating and wow. then just like went off but it, it kept, i mean i have a video probably like a minute of it just kind of chilling so even though i only saw one i saw it really close so it's pretty excited wow. about it did uh was that in like the higher elevations where there's no trees or yeah well no okay. there were trees it was washington okay mm-hmm. crazy yeah, yeah. I would, I black bears are are awesome. They're so yeah, cute. they're so pretty. I mean, I've seen. I feel like I've seen a couple in Shenandoah, but they're always like running away. It's always their butt, you know. This was like yeah. 
the first time that I really saw it close up. It's crazy. Awesome. I love that. I loved it seeing, hearing stories about the animals because mm-hmm. so many different encounters. So mm-hmm. any, any really difficult times that, you know, like you were very close to being like, this is going to be a night where it's going to be insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'd say there were two, two like difficult times that come to mind. One is like more like on the emotional side um, that I think I mentioned when my husband came to visit me in Mammoth and then, you know, had like great time with him. He left. And then my friends were like, my trail family was like, you know, five days ahead. And so I was by myself for more or less for like five days, which in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot, but when you're like hiking all day in your head and <laughs> it feels yeah. like a lot. Um, and then, you know, it was in the Sierra. So the elevation gain was tough and um, yeah, I, I guess I was just feeling lonely, like camping, camping alone at night um, and just like tired. And um, yeah, but I, I think I did have some good reflection on like, why am I doing this and had some more like emotional kind of connection with, which is important, right? Like that was, I thought I would have more of that, (laughs) but you're around people more than you expect to be. Um, And then, you know, eventually I caught up with them and it was fine. Uh, So I'd say that was like the emotional side. And then um, uh, I would say my worst day, what I call the worst day on trail was in Washington state and it started it's like a really nice morning you know we we're kind of like it's supposed to be a short day we're like oh we're only doing 15 miles today like party day like it's you know we were having like lunch on this beautiful rock and then it started to drizzle and we're like oh maybe we should get moving you know it's drizzling a little bit <laughs> my friend decided to wear jorts he was like party day i'm gonna wear my jorts <laughs> which don't have jorts short, like jean shorts like okay. don't ask me why he's carrying these but he decided nice. <laughs> to wear them because we're only hiking 15 miles miles but then it ends up like a torrential downpour like it's and it's also cold it's not like warm it's freezing <laughs> like pouring I have one item of clothing it's like my shorts you know I have rain gear uh, but at the, but at, at that point it's raining so hard it's like is there is there a point in putting this on yeah. because like keeping it dry and like using it later to warm myself up And so there's like a stream coming down the trail because it's raining so hard. My friend broke like both of his poles, (laughs) you know, kind of like trying to go down the trail and just like slipping because there's mud everywhere. Um, And yeah, I just, it was just like really, um, you know, emotionally like exhausting, like, okay, I'm freezing. We just need to make it. And there's no, you know, there's limited campsite. So it's like, you have to make it to the next campsite and we're at a higher elevation. So we had to go down. Um, <laughs> so we end up at this like camp spot, finally, like, th- you know, throw out my tent and then I go to get in it and there's like a puddle in mm-hmm. the bottom of my tent. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and my, <laughs> my friend just looks at me and he's like, oh, the, you know, we're Washington or like the rain broke almost broke trail slice which is my trail name (laughs) Mm. um and yeah it was just a really tough like day and night and I ended up like sharing a tent with my friend um to the you know just to stay warm and the next the next day it was still drizzling but it was like not as bad and again you know we got to the top of the ridge the next day and you know the sun kind of opened up and we were able to hang out (laughs) we get there and it's called a yard sale like everyone has their stuff out to dry it off um but yeah that was it was a really tough day and just kind of reminded me how like mother nature (laughs) is is like tough right and you need to be prepared and um yeah, I mean, you know, it had been relatively dry in the trail because that's the PCT. Um, it doesn't rain as much. And so it was just like a reminder to stay vigilant. And, you know, we were still like a few days from town, but got into town and I bought like, you know, I don't know, just like a warm hat and some like waterproof gloves. I was like, all right, <laughs> you know, yeah. Washington means business. Let me just make sure that I'm, you know, safe. Did, did you hit any snow, like snowstorms or anything? Um, we did, but not, I didn't, nothing crazy, but yeah, just, you know, some, 
you know, inch or, or two on the ground, but um, nothing, nothing crazy. But that was when it was like, okay, we need to move faster, you know, like winter yeah. is coming kind of thing. And I finished at the beginning of September. <laughs> and generally, wow. like the rule of thumb is to finish before the end of September, because that's when October is when the snow comes. Um, so yeah, uh, it was kind of like move faster because the snow is coming, like winter is coming. Crazy. Awesome. So, um, what's your, your favorite parts of the trail? Of yeah. Favorite part. The whole thing. Yeah. But I mean, there are good parts about every section. I think that's what I love about the PCT is that it's so, you said it like variable and different, like yeah. the desert. I like wasn't my favorite section, but at the same time, it was the first, it was my first experience, you know, and it was beautiful in its own way. You have like never ending views because there aren't trees, you know, very like, I mean, clear, you can see just amazing sunsets and sunrises. Um, And then you get into the Sierras and it's like arguably the most beautiful place in, I mean, at least in the United States, but you know, in, in the world and you know maybe <laughs> maybe in canada has a beat but i don't know i have yet to visit um it's and then, it's probably close yeah um and but i would say and then like you know northern california it started to get green again oregon it's like a little you know rainforest so it, it has its own beauty but I would say that my favorite section was definitely just all of Washington state. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Awesome. I loved, I loved Washington. Um, it's so green, like coming from the East coast, like Northeast, it's so green and lush. And I really miss that um, being in like the desert and even the Sierras, like it has evergreens, but it's not, it's more like rocky and mountainous. And, um, but the, you know, Washington is like so lush and beautiful. And we were there when it started to change color which is super early, like end of um, August, beginning of September, you saw, we saw what are called larches, which are, yeah, yeah, type of tree that they turn yellow. They're um, just almost like on fire. They're like fire orange sometimes. Mm -hmm. And the bushes, like the blueberry bushes, I didn't know that Washington was so colorful. Like I was like, oh, the East coast is so much better because, you know, our fall is so beautiful. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know that Washington, you know, even though a lot of it is evergreens that like blueberry bushes turn like, you know, yellow and red and orange. Um, And then I saw most of the animals that I saw were in Washington state. Um, Yeah. uh, I would say just all of Washington. <laughs> it's nice. Did you, um, does the PC, uh, T go through the, the giant sequoias area? They don't, unfortunately. Oh man, that mm-hmm. would have been, that would have been magical. To do like an offshoot. They, I saw Joshua. We saw a lot of Joshua trees in the. Oh, those are, those are so awesome. Well, yeah. Very different. They Seven like foot different. trees that are like pointy and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So, so cool. Mm-hmm. Wicked. I got to get, uh, well, we're going to the funny thing is, um, not to break off the thing, but we're going to Utah in Ooh. eight days. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Where are you going? We're going to go right outside of Zion. Okay, cool. And we have like a bunch of hikes basically outside of Zion. We're not going, we're going in the Zion for observation point. Nice. Yeah. I did that hike. It's very pretty. Is it, is it easy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not bad at all. Good, it's good. like seven miles, but not, it's not bad. Yeah. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And then we have a bunch of trail hikes around there but do i'm 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 can't wait to see the desert terrain again Mm -hmm. zion is also one of the most beautiful places i've ever been nice (laughs) yeah we're definitely we have i have so much i have so much planned but not not too much like uh there's a place called uh buckskin gulch it's very popular right by uh right by what's it called oh my god What's the the wave? It's right bas- right beside the wave. Oh, nice, it's cool. Like, mm-hmm. It's like the longest, deepest canyon in the world. So we're gonna check that out. And then there's there's a place down below it, like like seven or eight miles below it, that people rarely go to, and it's like colors of mountains. Like, whoa. Um, but yeah, off topic. But yeah, so no, I can't wait amazing. to get back out to the desert because mm-hmm. I haven't been out to to Arizona. We went out to Arizona like 2018 and did uh, Sedona, but Mm-hmm. I just, I just love the desert because like you said, there's nothing blocking you to yeah. see views. There's no trees. It's just open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have to it's watch deeper. out with my wife that oh. the ginger. 
oh yeah no wear a hat wear lots of sunscreen so I, did you did you get one of those like like long open okay i got did a sun hoodie well so i wore a sun hoodie and then i did for the desert i had like a brimmed hat where'd you get that Ju- um i think i the brand is called that i got was like sunday something sunday something i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna write that down on sunday sunday something because she needs <laughs> she needs one let's see sunday hat maybe it's called Oh, Sunday afternoons. That's the brand, but they have a ton of different types, like, you know, like the wicker ones and then it's like more sporty ones. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Highly recommend. And then the long, do like the, the sun hoodie. I did like, I would put up the hood, you know. <laughs> good, good. Okay, good. We got some of that. Excellent. There. Sorry to go off topic. <laughs> oh no. Excellent. Um, so uh, a lot of, a lot of times I, I hear this and, uh, it sucks sometimes and people can't really recover. Um, post hike depression. Yeah. Do, do you have any of that? <laughs> I would say so after trail, um, after trail, I, f- I feel like I did a little bit of traveling around. I spent like a week in Seattle with my trail family. We got like a, a little apartment and hung out there. And then, um, then, oh yeah, I went to Boston and met my nephew (laughs) and then went to, um, at North Carolina for a wedding. I feel like I tried to stay busy after for at least, I think a month after I was kind of hopping around, which really helped me transition back. And then it was great seeing my friends and things like that. Um, but then as I moved into back to DC, which is a city, you know, pretty big city, it's very bustling. We lived in a small apartment in the city and that really got to me. Yeah. Just not having good access, like outdoor access, didn't have like, you know, a yard or anything like that, literally didn't have anything. (laughs) Um, so that was really tough after spending, like, you know, you walk 25 miles a day, you get so many endorphins from doing that. There's like I don't know. I felt like I didn't really have any stress because you're just walking, you walk, you eat, you sleep, you know, like you're, you're very, your life is so simple. Um, and so transitioning back to like the hustle and bustle of the city was tough. Um, but I heard, I listened to this podcast recently and I thought it was interesting because they described it not as me, not as post-trail depression, but as like grief, And I thought that resonated more with me because I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was depressed, but I definitely felt like I lost something. Like I lost a friend or like I lost a lifestyle Mm -hmm. and, you know, it was like, no one wants to hear you talk about it. (laughs) You know, it's like, yeah, we get it. You were, you walked for five months. That's great. Good for you. You know, please stop talking about it. Um, So that was uh, tough, but I've, you know, moving out to Colorado, honestly, has been really helpful because I've, yeah, I do a lot of trail running and hiking and climbing, and I'm just trying to stay as active and be outdoors as much as possible. But I, I do know, yeah, some of my friends who've been struggling more with kind of integrating back into normal life. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine like just being out there in the vast openness with nothing Mm-hmm. And the view, the views, that's what, that's what gets me about hiking is for me is the views. And I, I just can't, I don't want to leave, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, every day is like beautiful in its own way, you know, and it's different and so, <sighs> gotta get back. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right now, now talking about it, I'm sorry. I brought you back into that <laughs> little mode. I'm sorry. It's all good. <laughs> so any, any tips for any uh, future long distance hikers on here? yeah just do it you know like you can plan as much as you want but you know I read a bunch of books and listen to podcasts and um but you know there's always a, an ex- you can always make an excuse and it's a once in a lifetime opportunity just do it <laughs> I don't know nice. that's my main piece of advice <laughs> so um my wife wanted to ask uh what about some advice for the ladies because i know it's got to be it's got to be crazy you know like i'm sorry to say but pissing and stuff like that you know you got, <gasps> did you take one of those sheepies no so i yeah i honestly like everyone you don't have so to talk about it by the way. what you don't have to talk about it by oh the way. i really <laughs> don't mind so i'm like 
again, like we all get so comfortable with each other and you're just like doing it all day, every day. I really, you know, it's just part of life. Um, yeah. So I, no, I didn't use one. I do. I know someone who did, but I didn't feel uncomfortable just kind of, you know, squatting and peeing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, there's this thing that I highly recommend for women hikers called the deep, the, uh, the, um, Kula cloth. And it's like Kula cloth, Kula cloth, <laughs> those female hikers. So instead of using like toilet paper, it's just like a cloth. It's micro antimicrobial. Um, you can wash it. So like I use, use it throughout the entire hike. Um, and it's, yeah, just for wiping and it's yeah. Antimicrobial cool women owned, small women owned business recommend. Nice. Yeah. And just to find other women to hike with. Um, there are quite, I think, yeah, the stats are, I just, I feel like I just heard this the other day that, you know, I think the stats are now that 40% of, P, I don't know if it's PCT hikers or just general long distance hikers are women. So it's like growing a ton wow. from what it was before, um, which is great. Nice. That's pretty cool statistics. Mm-hmm. So when Jessica and I were down in the Shenandoahs, she, uh, once again, we, we, we did the whole trail magic stuff and she fell in love. Mm-hmm. And we, when we were at one of the viewpoints, there's viewpoints everywhere, um, especially on the road, uh, we hit like seven women and, you know, Jessica like walks over, we give them some soda and uh, some oranges and some like M&Ms and stuff. And they were like praising us, but they all had to get back on the trail. We're like, we gotta, we gotta get back on the trail. One of them stayed behind. I forgot what her trail name was, but she was, I think it was like something to have to do with McDonald's. She was like Mickey D or something like uh-huh. that. Cause she loved it. But she like, Jessica's like asking like 700 questions. Like, how do you pee? What do you pee with? Where do you put your, this, what do you do with that? And mm-hmm. The girl was just so cool and so chill and telling her just like, you know, I use a she pee and you know, this and that and the other thing. And mm-hmm. I was just like, I was like, wow. I'm just like, it's so funny. I'm like, would my wife ever do this? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica would I never mean- do you never know. Like once you're out there, it just like becomes second nature, you know, and just you stop being embarrassed about it because it's just like normal, you know, normal human bodily functions. We all gotta go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And once again, you're you're hiking long distance with a bunch of friends and mm-hmm. you did you did that shit in high school with friends. So. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> so crazy. Any so like last question of the night, you got any long distance hikes in the, in the, in the future? I wish, (laughs) um, no, no long distance hikes planned for right now. Um, I do, I'm planning to, I have some friends from the PCT who are doing the CDT this year. Um, one doing the Colorado trail. So I might try and do like a week with them somewhere, um, probably in July at some point. Yeah. But I'd, I think, yeah, I'd love to do like an international trail one day. Um, It doesn't have to be, you know, like what I want to say too, is that for people who want to get out and do like backpacking, it doesn't have, you don't have to give up six months, you know, five, six months of your life to do it. You can do a week trail. You can do a two week, you know, you can even do a month or two. You can do a section. Like there are a bunch of people on the PCT that do sections, you know, you don't have to do the whole thing. So it doesn't have to be this inaccessible activity. Yeah. You're not going to, you can, you can do the John Mayer trail in like 10 days. Come on. Right. Yeah, exactly. People, you know, just do it. Just get a, the, I mean, the permits are kind of hard to get, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now they're, they're getting happens. even harder. Everything's getting harder because mm-hmm. so many people are getting interested in it. Right. Yeah. Social so media. Sorry. Yeah. We didn't even try for, for angels landing or any other, the wave. Oh my mm-hmm. God. Like, so we are just like, I'm just like, we're going to go to stuff that, I see on a map because I'm, I'm a crazy map junkie. Like mm-hmm. I have so many stars on Zion national park that are off of the, the BLM stuff like that, the mm-hmm. Bureau of land management. And it's just a parking spot and it's just a, a gulch or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, we're going to go there. Just like screw angels landing. I don't yeah. want to stand up there with 50 Seriously. people. I, honestly, it's better. Cause you're getting a, you know, a better experience when I walked through um, like Yosemite we were, you know, go, coming from the Sierras where you're so, it's so remote, you're like I'm by myself and I come to, yeah, I forget the little, like, there's like a little welcome center there and you can, again, hitchhike down to Yosemite. 
I spent a day in Yosemite and I was like, this is insane. Like <laughs> the people, there's so many people. And I was like, man, people just should just go and do like short backpacking trips, like not in the Valley. Like there are other beautiful places to see. Um, so I, yeah, I think that's definitely the way to go. Yeah. So definitely cool. Um, so hopefully you can get another long distance hike. I, I want to see you do the, the John Mayer trail for me. I would love to. No, because I can't. I got to at least find somebody else. If you, if you plan on doing it, let me know. All right. There's also the Sierra high route. Look into that too. Yes. Uh, I think I have, like I, I said, I'll show you that. Uh, I'll, I'll send you a link for that uh, bear paw Sierra. Oh hiking. yeah. Yeah. It's like it. 10,000 feet and so it's, cool. you start in the Sequoia. So it's amazing. nothing better, mm-hmm. but excellent. Well, Vicki, thank you for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. I had so much fun. Thank you for having me. Always happy to talk about hiking. So <laughs> it's been a pleasure. I not even imagine. So hopefully uh, we'll see you sometime here on the East Coast. Yeah, definitely. And well, you know. I haven't seen Connor in a long time. I haven't seen you probably since the wedding. Since the wedding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call me in Boston or in Colorado. Even better. Yeah, even better. I'll definitely do that. So um, i like to, to thank the monthly donors. Really appreciate it, guys thank everyone who's listening. It's crazy. that actually people are listening, especially the Catskills thing. I might have to change the name of outside the line from the Catskills or something like that. Um, subscribe on any platform on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I have a website. Uh, look Vicky up on, on Instagram. What's your name? My Instagram name. Yeah. It's majestical Vicky. Nice. I love An inside it. I joke. Lo- okay. Okay. My other name is Metal Man Stan. So you could, probab- you could have probably predicted that. Yeah. Knowing me from high school. Um, <laughs> shoot me a review on uh, Spotify or Apple or any other platform you use. I'm probably this part right here. If you see it, I'm probably going to get that pre pre recorded. So I don't have to say it every time. But Vicky, thank you for, for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. And I had a lot of fun listening to your awesome stories. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, have a good night, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.